you start feeling this deep, deep grip of fear. Like something is watching you. Something. They're coming from here now. Which also brings forth the horrifying prospect that we're just surrounded. We're boned. I am Isander. And I am Coda. And thank you for tuning in to this episode. We're back in Warhammer with the winner of the poll. Barely. Barely. I mean, it was so cool. I will show you guys the Patreon one. Um, it'll be up on the screen now. Um, it was like one vote. It was, it was, and, and that was across the board because we weigh every single result. It was so close, but the turn is barely edged out the Grey Knights. So, by, by one vote on Patreon, <laughs> we get. Well, it's not just the one Patreon vote. I mean, don't get me wrong. The well, Patreon, no, like, yeah, 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 exactly. But every, that, that vote in specific was very close. Mm hmm. Everywhere else, it was still just about that No, close. it just surprised me to see the Patreon vote. How oh, yeah, it was neck and neck in Patreon. Yes. Yeah. But we now have a bug's life. Today, we're going to get a hair experimental with the approach, because I think the best way to show off the Tyranids is to look at them through the eyes of a poor commander who's about to be invaded by them. Oh. Because a lot of the comments I see in pretty much any 40K discussion are, Oh, well, why don't they just do X? They don't know that. Most people don't know a tenth of what we do. So I feel like looking at the Tyranids from the perspective of somebody who's actively being invaded by the Tyranids would be fun. <laughs> and also, I won't lie, while researching it, oh my god, so terrifying. <laughs> oh my god, so terrifying. They're great. I love them. For, I mean, from all of the art that I've seen of uh, Tyranids from doing like all of the editing, that they're sp they're spooky looking. They're, genuinely they're, glad they're they got new models. Scary. And genuinely glad they're the baddies of the new Space Marine game. Because, oh, they're cool. They're, but they're scary. They're scary cool. To keep tabs on our governor, let's call him, let's give him a name, right? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking Poor Stooge. Poor Stooge. Poor Stooge here is... First name poor, last name Stooge? Oh, one million percent. <laughs> he's having the he's having a ball of a time. He's living the dream. He's ruling a planet. Uh, for the sake of storytelling, let's give that a name too. Megadead. Megadead. Please don't pay any attention to these names. They have no bearing to the end of the story. Okay? <laughs> so, Poor Stooge is having... A great time governing Megadead, doing what most governors do, being a lecherous tool, mostly being a figurehead, not really accomplishing that much. Just kind of existing. Just doing your standard person in power shtick mm. of the work's happening by 70% of the people below me and I'm just a pretty face for it, you know? <laughs> it's a good time. It's, it's a great time. I assume it's about to not be, though. Uh, We'll get there. We'll get there. Say it about noon one day. He experiences a catastrophic earthquake. Oh, yeah. It's big enough to do major damage. Now, Stooge actually having to do his job for once is mildly upset, but he begins working disaster crews, starts rallying people to help them out. You know, the big earthquake, you get people to help out. As a note, while I tell the story, some of this may make no sense. Since you don't know what's happening at all, that's the fun of it. That's And for those of you that do, oh god, this is going to be so much fun. Was anyway. he blasting Earthquake the entire time? No. No, oh. no. He wasn't He wasn't sitting there repairing buildings singing, you make my Earthquake. Well, oh, in you make my earthquake. theory, but then within a few days, my tsunamis earthquake. start hitting everywhere. Oh. <laughs> so he doesn't really have time to sing. Yeah. And then the planet starts getting bombarded by solar flares, too. Yeah, it, it kind of looks like a Roland Emmerich movie. Just the worst things are happening all this of a sudden, just the, all at once, the, really badly. This is just the movie 2012. Oh, yeah. This oh, is just yeah. the movie 2012. Not that bad. Not plates lifting miles into the sky bad, but pretty bad. Almost there, yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty bad, pretty bad. Probably like um, a, a 0.5 on the 2012 scale. Yeah. I would say a tasteful 0. 0.4. 0. 0.4? To 6 in the worst places. Okay. Now, it's a solar flare. That's going to mess with communications. Oh, yeah. Duh. Duh. Right? That's so what, That's what it does. He's working around the clock to organize aid and restructure people, but resources aren't infinite, right? No. Because on top of all that communication issue, they're also noticing stuff is falling into disrepair a lot quicker. And some stuff looks like outright sabotage, 
but whatever. In times of crisis, that's when insurgents are going to come up. And Stooge has a ton of enemies. A ton of enemies. He's expecting this. He's like, ah, this is probably good old Jerry over there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jerry, can you stop sabotaging my stuff or I swear to God I'll have my trained assassins kill you? Exactly. So he doesn't think anything of it. It's, this is a problem for later. Let's deal with this now. He shoots out a ship into the into the warp to go get help from the nearest system. And when this scout ship arrives at the nearest system, it finds complete and utter desolation oh throughout oh i don't mean carnage i don't mean remains i mean nothing it, it, tomb world just rocks just rocks there's nary a skeleton to be seen no, you don't understand the soil has no nutrients anymore any precious metals that were in are gone now. Tomb world. There is no atmosphere. Tomb world. It's, no, it's worse than that. There's no water anymore. Jesus. It's effectively an asteroid with not a body. It's a, It looks like the moon. But worse, because at least the moon has a wee. I believe it has an atmosphere. Oh. It's just an ounce. Just an ounce of an atmosphere. Yeah, and this was a verdant planet. Yeah. So... Seeing this, mm. the scout ship rightfully freaks the hell out. So what what happened Whatever here? the hell happened here, this is bad. We need to get back home. And they try to reach their home planet to find that there is no answer from home. Mm. And they cannot travel back through the warp. Something has smothered their planet in darkness. Mm. Hmm. I don't like that. Back on the surface of Megadead, they're obscenely preoccupied with everything going on. They finally reigned in the natural disasters because, I mean, it was a disaster. It's bad, but it's, it's, it's manageable. It's, it's know, manageable. Get, the, get, the, get the, the crisis responders there, the first responders. And, of, of course. You know, fix up the buildings, duct tape things back together. One million percent. It's all good. But now there are reports of faster and more aggressive wildlife taking hold. With some people even saying they've seen figures they've never seen before darting in the night. And animals that don't look right. Hmm. Bigger teeth. Larger frames. Scales where there weren't necessarily any. What in the Norse mythology? Exactly. Again, so much to deal with. Whatever. Whatever. Probably falling rubble on their mind. Yeah, I, I, not my problem. Somebody probably get hit hit mm. in the head too hard by a, by a, a stray brick. And exactly. They're just seeing stuff. And now. besides, poor Stooge can't focus on any of this because communications continue to worsen, even though the solar flares have calmed down a bit. First, they were having a rough time talking to the wider Imperium. Now, the Emperor's light itself is darkening. Well, that's not good. Ooh. Must think, oh, oh no, is another heresy happening? Did somebody finally get to him? Well, everybody remotely psychic on the planet will begin to hear an odd fuzz over the next coming days. So they just hear the, the white noise machine going in their head 24-7? A little bit like that. And over the coming weeks and days, this takes a while, by the way. This is a very long time frame I'm condensing. Right. This can take up to a hundred days from what I was reading. Mm. So this takes a while. Over the next coming weeks and days, that fuzz will become clearer and louder, slowly building until it's a cacophony of alien screams and scratches. I don't like that. Ooh. I don't like that. First, it's the psychers, but even if you aren't psychic at all, you start feeling this deep, deep, grip of fear like something is watching you something's wrong it's it's that un, i don't know if you've ever had this feeling and frankly good on you if you've never had this feeling there's a very unique feeling when there's something stalking you at night i can't describe it i've had it very few times in my life but it's a unique eyes on the like something is going to kill me right now yeah yeah Everyone. Ha ha hairs on the back of the neck and just like a uh, dart on the horizon. A exactly. Something is watching me and I might die. <laughs> that grips everyone on the planet. Psychic or not. Mm 
<laughs> so children are just confused and crying all it's the time. Like, what Parents is are what is stressed. Happening? Exactly. I don't like. I don't like the demons clawing at my brain. And at this point. Even poor Stooge has realized something more sinister is at hand, and he gathers his psychics to try and punch through this noise and send out a distress bet message. He's just like, I can't duct tape this together. He's, 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 his exact position right now is, whatever this is, is an actual assault. Yeah. We need help. It's a lot bigger than I we am. We need Marines or something. I'm not sure what, but this sucks. So they gather their strongest psychers together to try and punch through this signal and Just SOS message. And any who try immediately go mad on the spot. Starting to scream out in complete agony and utter phrases in a tongue so alien, their voices shouldn't be able to pronounce them. This is so they just end up doing some exorcism stuff. Oh, one. Exactly. Exactly. (gasps) And this happens to any psyker who tries to use their abilities. So if you were, you know kind of competent and you decided to try and light a candle with your mind today utterly insane just like you know i don't want to get up off the couch to get my morning coffee morning coffee to (laughs) it has this interesting effect with only the very weakest psychers don't get this impact or the very very strongest who don't try to go directly against the signal everything in the middle goes mad Mm. Mm -hmm. that's a lot they are severed from the outside world. Nobody is coming to help. No. And now they can look to the stars and see the horror descending upon them. The constellation themselves have gone dark and all they can see is an entire alien armada as far as they can see. Mm, I don't like that. I don't like that. And with this armada comes a rain. A rain? A rain. Massive chunks of cartilage begin to bombard the planet. Ew. Not only does this seriously damage the surface, because 10 tons of cartilage will do that, with them come massive waves of spores. Just as they're falling, they're just Pumping out spores. And when they land, they're still doing that. Wildlife around this gets more aggressive. Plant life starts becoming toxic. The water gradually becomes more contaminated by these spores, needing constant filtration. And over a course of a few days, the spores released are enough to blanket the planet in a thick fog. It's hard to see through and even harder to breathe in. I don't like it. It just turns into the upside down. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like the upside down in real life. Stooge is building for a fight. But what he doesn't realize is nothing he can do will come off as anything but the death rattle of the damned. Oh, yeah. Command centers begin to disappear into the fog. Those who survive tell stories of their own brother's turning on them suddenly, with the help of alien forms they've never seen before, eventually dismantling the defenses and eating the brains of any commanders. Any bodies left after these fights are dragged away into the fog. Alien or human, whatever it is, just gets dragged away. Brutal raids start popping up left, right, and center, but not just against anyone or anything. These are targeted against the elite leaving them in the same brainless state with no bodies. Whatever this is knows them well. It's not random at all. Your minister of finance will be murked for no reason. Mm. Yeah. It's very, very, very clinical and surgical cuts being made right there. None of this even registers for Stooge because the full force of the alien threat has come to bear and he's left commanding against the tide. The planet literally cracks and heaves as massive spires burst from the surface and reach high into the atmosphere. The ground itself rumbles as Tyranids push forward from the fog, forming unbroken battle lines miles long. Miles long? Miles long. We're talking like a moving Great Wall of China. It is over. It's done. There are alien forms there that tower into the skies. They push in with a force completely unmatched, 
tailor-made for the exact situation. Stooge has a stellar air force that doesn't seem to matter. They have stuff that are strong enough to knock their ships from the sky. He has great walls. Somehow they burrowed beneath them and ripped them down. That's, uh, that's over. He's playing rock and they're playing paper. He's playing rock and they're playing a different game entirely. However, poor Stooge. He's playing, he's playing rock, paper, scissors. They're playing backgammon around him. <laughs> poor Stooge does, does manage to outthink them. He did, he did get his job somehow. He manages to outthink them once and get off a solid attack from behind their lines, completely catching them by surprise. And it's here that the full painting is unveiled. Because as he watches from the map, his flank comes in, and not only do those affected directly react, but so does everything. In the same way, if I was to form a fist at you right now, it wouldn't just be your face that would react, but your whole body. Every Tyranid reacts. So he attacks from the behind of one battle line. Three others immediately circle it to defend it, and four push into the space where your flank came from. It reacts as one organism. This is not a disorganized rush. It is something larger. We love hive mind players. He has finally seen the full picture in all its glory. As the Tyranids push closer and closer, he can do nothing but watch. Watch as those spires open and reach out with countless tendrils to drag away anything living. Watch as the hordes decimate his units and drag the remains away. Watch as the seas and the skies are flooded with vicious rippers that hunt everything that was once native, and watch as the soil is stripped of all its minerals and the atmosphere itself siphoned. Because in the face of a Tyranid invasion, most planets can do nothing but watch the inevitable. Frightening. I love them. Existentially horrifying. I love them. Frightening. Oh, oh, and you want to know my favorite part? That's just the scouting fleet. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's right. The thing that's been darkening world after world is currently thought to be nothing more than probes reaching in from the dark. It's just the scouting fleet? Paving the way for something larger. It's like, that's like, that's like Destiny, the Vex, you're only fighting the angry engineers. This is just the scouting fleet? Ah. I love that. I don't want to know what a combat fleet looks like. I love the Tyranids. But before we get into that larger force, we need to get into the larger force that helps us keep making this show. <laughs> Our wonderful patrons, if you head on over to patreon.com slash Coda, not only do you get a bonus episode every week, not only do you get to join the Legion Discord, you get priority on all fan-submitted content. That means we wait your votes a little bit more, and if we ever have to do like Q&As and stuff like that, you are first in line every single time. You get um, the once-a-month Q&A chat stream. That's always very, very fun, so you can get in on that. And um, as you guys have helped us completely shatter our goals... We will be mailing out special limited edition patches for those of you that were there. There's already been the 101 and the 251. And if you're in those two groups, stay tuned to the end to find out what's going on with that patch in specific. And now we've set our sights on 500. We are a little past 300 at the moment. Not a little past. We're well past 300. We're actually. like around like 360 and, something right yep. now. Yeah. And that's the only way to get one of these patches. We will probably do merch in the future, but these patches will never be re-released. They will only be given to those who were there from the beginning. So if you want to get in on that, if you want to help support us, if you want to do your cosmic good deed, <laughs> head on over to patreon.com slash Isander and Coda. Now back to the end of all things, the Tyranid Hive Mind. There is a saving grace. It's really bad to fight them don't get me wrong oh it's terrible it, not great at all seems awful the comforting thing is it's only coming from one side so we can brace they all seem to be coming from the same direction so we can prepare just fortify that side we can fortify that side just and things will be great create the galactic magino line what 
The the Maggie No line. What's that? You know the the big wall that the French made in World War Two. Maggie No line. It was a heavily fortified line across the wood, uh, across like a massive expanse of woodland mm-hmm. that was like everything: artillery, mm-hmm. vehicles, mm-hmm. armaments. Oh, okay. That's basically what pretty much every faction's doing in 40k. Yeah, creating a Ex- big interstellar Magino line. Exactly. They're all preparing to fight the Tyranids from that one direction they're coming from, and everybody fears them. I mean, it, it shows up in the nicknames they give them because they're really cool. The Great Dragon, The Bane, The Great Devourer, Leviathan, Behemoth. And the list goes on and on and on. I don't like all of these names. They frighten me. Oh, oh! everyone fears the Tyranids. Even the Silent King came back because of them. <laughs> yeah. Which, if you don't know, he actually killed gods. He, t- he turned Creatively, around. Creatively, but he did it. He turned around from his uh, personal exile, screaming bugs, 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 bugs. Exactly. Now, now before we get into their lore and what they're currently up to, let's explain what the hell they just did to that planet. The, what the hell did they just do to this planet? Starting with those earthquakes in the very beginning. Earthquakes. Those are a byproduct of their tr- form of travel. Technically speaking... They can't travel faster than light. They can't fast travel like everyone else can. They, they can't. They don't have FTL. No. So instead of doing that, they twist and bend gravity to allow them to jump to places really quickly. Oh. They they need to get to food. It's like that one uh, uh, NASA like uh, um, uh, uh, thought experiment ship, the one that bends space around it instead of you know mm-hmm. going faster than light. Kind of. They do it in a less logical way, but they do it, and it's fiction. We'll let it slide. Moral of the story, though, whenever they pop up near something... <sighs> Gravity waves, I You assume. can imagine the chaos it causes. Hence, the disaster movie for a bit there. And that is why Tyranid invasions usually take so long. Because they can't just pop up on the surface. Mm-hmm. They have to pop up as far, and it's it's the Goldilocks zone. Yeah, they have to pop in as close as they possibly can without destroying what they want to eat. Yeah, like Thankfully, not so close that the gravity waves destroy the planet, but not so far away that they're like we gotta spend so much longer just going the rest of the way, the last mile. Exactly. Thankfully, this also gives them a very clearly defined weakness. They can't react as fast as everybody else. I mean, space marines can just appear. Effectively, behind you. There's a few more steps to it than that, but if they need to, they can get somewhere quick. They can teleport behind you, even nothing the personnel orcs, kiddo. Even the orcs can, in their own weird way, get somewhere quick. Tyranids can't. They're just, they're, 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 they're speed limited. A- exactly. So that, when those disaster movies were happening, Stooge could have stopped it right then and there. That is the best possible time to act. And I want you to keep in mind as we go through this, that they kind of operate like accountants. They have a they have a very tight. You you laugh, but they they operate on a very tight budget. It's it's very much so an unthinking. No, no, they've, they've, it's very much so thinking. Uh, it's it's that animal kingdom propensity to do the math around food. You know, mm-hmm. where I'll be honest, a gator is beating me ten times out of ten. That's a fact. If there's a standing body of water higher than my waist, the gator's winning every time. The gator's going to get you. However, if I make myself bigger and seem like a threat, it'll do the math and go, this isn't worth the fight. This isn't worth the fight. I could expend way too much energy doing this. I could go body slam a capybara. I think I'm just going to go do that. Goodbye. I actually don't think they body slam capybaras. Very few things body slam capybaras. Capybaras are really nice to everything. They they just have solid vibes, I guess. They're just immaculate vibes. Pretty much. It'll go body slam something less threatening. It's it's why with some animals, not all, if you make yourself seem like this lunch is going to be a fight, the animal will back off. The Tyranids kind of operate like that. It's less appear big to them and more make this balance, make this budget unbalanced. If, If you can make eating me worth less than eating anybody else, they'll just go eat somebody else. So, in this moment, if he just fired off tons of ships to assault them, it's possible he could have made them go, 
That ain't this is, no. This no. isn't worth it. Just there turn are a hundred other around. worlds. Go find something else. There are a hundred other worlds. We'll find lunch somewhere else. We can we can find us. We we've got McDonald's at home. A- exactly. It's like imagine if you went into a fast food restaurant and it was guarded by Mike Tyson. <laughs> I'll go somewhere else. Honestly, no fast food is worth that. I'd probably eat healthier because oh, I, I, I don't want that. If I, I saw that. Prime I'll Mike Tyson, yeah. If I saw Prime Mike Tyson, I'll just go eat somewhere else. So, would you trade an ear for McDonald's? Oh, we're not even going to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> we're not even going to get into that. But that is that is a very distinct moment that they could be dealt with. Problem is, you're dealing with a disaster flick, and this actually helps them a lot because oh, you're too busy. In this time, they're also shooting forward scouting ships. Full of things we'll touch on later, but they're moving faster. They will they will beat the main body to the planet, right? Which brings us to phase two. Scouting. It will take ages for them to get to your planet. Genu the time the span of time between oh earthquakes to bugs, 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 bugs <laughs> is it could be years. They take a while. They take a while to get places. So scouting. They arrive here first, and their job is to keep you unawares and scout and learn about you they do this using scouts aptly named they they have another name but for all intents purposes we're going to call them scouts scouts. and gene stealers these guys deserve their own episode but what they do is they alter the flora and the fauna of the planet and they also study you as they go learning your strengths your weaknesses and also infiltrating your ranks slowly but surely putting themselves in critical positions so when the main body of the fleet arrives, oh, well, there goes half the army. They deserve an episode all their own. Gene Steelers are very cool. It's very complicated what they do. Well, it's not very complicated what they do. Think body snatchers. Body for snatchers. The, the thing. Yeah. For the intents and purposes yeah. of this episode, think body snatchers. And some have learned how to spread this disease through food. So they have gone to manufacturing worlds and are just... Filling it with the gene stealer gene. And that food's going to t- planets all over the place. Even if a Tyranid fleet's not necessarily on the way. They have spies now. They have spies. I am the spy. And that is why his communication started falling apart. Faster. Because <laughs> they had spies that were just like cutting phone lines everywhere. And that's why animals were acting weird. Because they weren't animals. No, they were animals. Just oh. modified. Modified. But this will go on for a while. Again. The fleet takes forever to get places. Which brings us to phase three. I'll be honest. I took some creative liberties with phase three. Because the shadow and the warp reach is far. Far. Realistically, they would have never been able to get a ship to the nearest planet. They both would have been smothered. If that planet was eaten, you're already smothered. It's just a fact. But, basically, the shadow and the warp is... The hive's internet connection... For all intents and purposes, I think you're trying to watch or listen to this episode of your favorite podcast, and somebody a mile away, or a kilometer, <laughs> connects to your internet, and they start downloading and uploading all of a bug's life in 4K, <laughs> thousands of times a second, and they're slowly walking towards you. Your router is just fried. <laughs> Your internet connection is going to get spotty, and it's only going to get worse the closer they get. Yeah. That is what happens to your mind. Mm. You can hear, basically, their communications. Which is where the demonic clawing and screaming comes from, I assume. Oh, one million percent. It's terrible. It's abysmal. Now, there are two ways to look at this. Number one, this is a purposeful jamming signal they put out. I don't like that one very much. I like number two more, which is that's just a function of them. Yeah, just... It's such a massive mind, it would exert that kind of pressure. And it makes sense if they came from outside the galaxy. They wouldn't really, you know, have anything in specific. Which, I'll be honest with the Tyranids, they evolved to everything. So they, they probably would have something specific. But either way, that's my favorite one, where it's just a function an unfeeling they, function. They them. just do it, and we happen to be like uh, uh, exposed to the demons. A- exactly. Regardless, yeah. They are actually immune to chaos, despite being potent psychers. Oh yeah, chaos can't corrupt them to save their lives. Is it because of the whole hive mind dealio? No idea. No idea. No idea. But they they have proper psychers. 
like proper psychers. They have the way it's organized is they're not all connected. It's it's there's a bunch of little units, and then it's connected to one massive leader who's kind of autonomous. Should he get severed from the hive, he can make decisions. Oh, they, wor- they work in like nodes. Exactly. Like and the then mesh network. It, it connects to a bigger one. You understand how this works. Yeah. yeah. E- exactly. So that's how they operate. Those big ones are biblical psychers. And chaos can't corrupt them to save their lives. And the, the biggest routers, there's usually only a few of these around. They're called the Norn Queens. They're basically the modem for this fleet that is a huge psyker that's a huge you don't understand if you manage to kill one theoretically which is hard because it's really well guarded it's not going to be on the surface it's going to be on the ship if you manage to kill one it will send out such a strong psychic blast that five more norn queens will appear Help. It's just help. Something went wrong. It's just the unacceptable has happened. Our turn. Our turn. We're getting we're getting you back. It's called the Hydra effect. The Hydra effect. Absolutely named. E- exactly. However, it's really hard to even get to that point. The Norn Queen's gonna be very, very, very well guarded. I would assume if you work on a a mesh network mm-hmm. st- life the mesh network lifestyle, if somebody like kills your personal modem, mm-hmm. I'd take offense to that. If somebody walked in, shot my modem, and said, hi, tried to leave, no. No, 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 I'm knocking them to the ground. Oh, one million percent. Now, I'll be honest, during scouting, you could theoretically still maybe plausibly survive. Oh, it's going to be hard. You're going to need Marines. It's going to be difficult. But in theory, on paper, you could. Phase four, you're bound. You're done. You're boned. After scouting, you can now fully see them. You're fully dipped in the shadow and the warp, and most of your psychers are useless. Yeah, it's it's, it's a every time they try to like dip their toe into the warp, they're just like g- gone mad. It's a wet paper towel in a hurricane. It's useless. Yeah, and now you can see the full hive fleet in its glory. So I don't care. They've already got you. They, they they've got you. Most planets don't make it out of here. Most planets don't make it past this phase. That those massive chunks of cartilage dropping spores are effectively laying the groundwork to consume the planet. Those spores, some of them, you know, bury deep into the ground and plant the seeds for those towers that are going to spring up later. Um, like I said, water is less drinkable, air is less breathable, animals more aggressive. It just makes your own war- it It gives them home field advantage suddenly. Yeah, because you're suddenly needing to deal with environmental factors. Mm -hmm. And this is the funnest bit about the Tyranids. They have been in contact with their scouts, so they know exactly what to expect on your planet and have been evolving for you. That's my favorite thing about the Tyranids. They, They all have adapt or die tattooed on them. It... Every fleet fights in a different way because of what they've seen, but most frighteningly of all is they can take genetic matter from planets that they've conquered. For example, there are newer, tougher gaunts than ever before, mysteriously coinciding with space marines disappearing. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> They're taking space marines and going, hmm. There are some tyranids cool. who are reproduced by spores after fighting orcs for so long. Uh-huh. Ah. Uh, yeah. Some I have, can see how that would be a problem. Some shadow in the warp has become absurdly strong after hunting chaos for it's so long. Just, it's just a black void at that point. And that is one of the biggest things to keep in mind when fighting the tyranids. You have to really think through what you choose to send their way. Because if they win, dear God. Yeah, if you send your best against them mm-hmm. at the start and their best loses, that, exactly. that's it. And my favorite thing is they've also been... They evolved specifically to fight you, but it's it's not a brainless hive. Like I said, it's not thousands of things rushing me. Ah, God, I have to deal with sheer force. It's one you. It's a hand. 
attached to a body. Yeah. It's not great for you. And that extends to their units. For example, there there are some tiny independent ones, right? But for example, their bio titans have guns made of other tyranids. So <laughs> you will be fighting a tyranid proper and there will be... It's like if I was boxing you and I had two extra arms that were being controlled by someone else. Independent of my thought. <laughs> yeah. Or if I was in a street fight and I just had like a gun mounted on my shoulder that was self-aiming the entire time. Yeah, that's a... Uh... They will fire bullets in you that can then burrow around. Jesus. It, you, well, right? I don't like that. They're, they're I don't like that They're specifically made bit. for certain things. They're, if, if you fire tons and tons and tons of flamers at them, they'll come back fireproof. Or at least fire retardant. If you just hit them with bolter after bolter after bolter, impact arm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Which brings, that's frightening. That's why phase four, you're pretty much screwed because they're here, they, they, they're, they're invested, and they've already adapted. Yeah, they know what they, you're they, doing. They've do. devoted too many resources to this at this point. There is very little you could do to unbalance this budget for me because getting anywhere else is going to take me forever. So I'm eating what I have. Mm -hmm. At this point, they are just charging you. All those sleeper agents have been activated, and. Any information they didn't have already, they're just picking out of the brains of your lieutenants. Literally. They know how the system works, so they know exactly who to go for and just grab them. Yeah. It, it's it's brutal, and it's such unrelenting force. You're boned. You're done. You're, you're done. You are Bender is, looking up into the sky going, we're boned. And as, as all this closes, like I said, they start the recycling process. So... Reduce, reuse. Exactly. They'll start sucking your atmosphere up, draining your water, manning every resource out of it, and most interestingly enough, the Tyranids will start just killing themselves. Yeah, they'll, they'll just grab your body and leap into an acid. They'll start sprouting acid vats all over the place. They'll just leap in. Because I, I, I've done my job. We've oh. eaten. <laughs> Time to reuse this. Could be more useful later. So basically, they, they store all the information from this battle so they know what to make later. You're done. Yeah. And Tyranids, because of this, can technically, and do for some of their named units, do respawns. Because I've been fighting for thousands of years. I'm a, a very, very useful node in this network. So I can just be reconstituted anywhere. I, after a fight, I'll just my, I'll melt myself, and I my, I can have a new body remade somewhere. My genetic memories have been saved exactly. in the nodes. Yeah, exactly. So I could just reappear somewhere else, more adapted for that specific situation. And be, okay, moving on. Bizarre, efficient, terrifying. Oh, I love them. The most terrifying thing is I lied. They're not coming from one direction. Oh. Well. In oh, the most no. recent in the most recent books, it has quickly been found out that they are coming from the opposite direction too. And Pinsir everyone's maneuver. forces were here. They're coming from here now. Mm, they're getting ganked. And Gilliman, poor poor Gilliman, is left throwing elites at them, who they're learning from and eating at an unconscionable rate. Which also brings forth the horrifying prospect that we're just surrounded. I don't like the we're just surrounded. I yeah. don't like the we're just surrounded theory. This is why I love the Tyranids. The universe is split functionally in half right now, with Angron showing up every other week to cause menaces. And the Tyranids are still scary. And if that wasn't frightening enough, on a wide scale, I love how they fight. I can't put into words how much I love how they fight. Because... For example, when fighting demons of corn, they'll just open up a path to their biggest guy. <laughs> because they know how to... They'll, they'll, they'll bait him. Not not even bait. If they fought demons of corn enough to know, we'll just make somebody who can crush every 1v1. And just... Think think about just the... No, think about the budget there. If you make one unit who can 1v1 over and over and over again... It's so easy. It's so easy. And it's corn, so easy. And corn will obviously take the 1v1 because it's corn. It's corn. Of course he it's is. It's corn. They'll literally just path open a path and corn, because he will never stab you in the back, and he's always honest and loves a fair fight. If you beat corn in a fight, he'll go, fair enough. Fair enough. You got okay, me. Whatever. Yeah. So they'll just do that sometimes. <laughs> they, they will just, okay. And, just be and, like, and hey, corn, I, I, I made this guy for you. 
properly one on one them. <laughs> it's so great. Some fleets will work together, for example. The universe is split in half. That's a problem even for the Tyranids. So they created a new high fleet, Kronos, that hunts chaos exclusively. Problem is, when you kill a demon, they turn to dust. Not much to eat after. So the Tyranids created support fleets for Kronos that will just go to planets, soften them up, eat a little bit of biomass to keep going, and then leave the rest for Kronos to come to later. Oh, Thanks, I hate uh, 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 Tyranid agricultural worlds. There are some Tyranids heavily fortifying a sector for we don't know what. It's probably the farms. Not that. Oh. It's it's something different. We, we're we not sure what. I frankly hope they never tell us what they're doing, but it's not grand. It It's because Tyranids are supposed to eat and move forward until they run out of food. These ones are establishing an empire for some reason. And so far, we have not found many hive fleets that are out of sync with each other. So, what's going on, right? Uh, f- terrifying they things. They also have a weird propensity. Now, this one's bordering on Fanon, but you know where I stand on this stuff. It, it's like it's 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 good. It's fun. I aggressively that- rule of cool, and this this gets the pass. They seem to be somehow aware of the Primarchs and the Emperor. Because first of all, it's kind of a theory, slightly disproven, but a theory that the reason they got here is because the Emperor is a big, inconscionably huge lighthouse. And they're just like, hmm. They're like, whatever that is has got to be delicious. Yeah, that looks tasty. Whatever that is has to be delicious. It's 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 a steakhouse with a massive beam in the sky. Is that flambe? A- exactly. So Are we doing a roast? So, with that in mind... I can go for some ribs. Exactly. With that in mind, they tend to maneuver specifically around Primarchs, which could be a factor of the fact that Primarchs kind of are black holes for the plot, because why would we learn about Space Marine B when their father's running around? Yeah. But they were beelining it from a crag until Gilman woke up, and then they started rerouting to wherever he is. And when they couldn't get to McCrag, they started beelining it for the Emperor. Now that the lion's around teleporting, I'm sure they're going to start beelining it for him. Hmm. Which raises the very, very real problem of here are the Emperor's finest warriors and we can never send them into a fight. Because heaven forbid the Tyranids ever eat one of them. And it seems like the Tyranids really because want to eat one of them. They're very efficient as is and they're very good at balancing the little bio budget. If they ate Gilliman, they'd be doing tax write offs. <laughs> they'd be doing tax write offs with your skull. I really hate tax write-offs with my skull. It'd be horrifying if they ate the lion currently. They'd just be teleporting places. And God, if they ever, ever get close enough to the Emperor to get that sweet, sweet meat off those baby back ribs, the universe is boned. Oh, it's done. (laughs) There's nothing they can do. If it's not already boned, if this galaxy is not the only one that hasn't been consumed yet, they, it will be. If they can just get a shred of whatever's left on that carrion lord, they're set. They're so set. It's so bad. They don't need it, anything else. I love that theory so much, and it would totally make sense that they'd be gunning for the emperor and his family, because what a jackpot that would it's be. It's just like, that's a huge looking any, roast right there. Any Primarch would be a blessing. I mean, their units got significantly tougher when they started eating Marines. There's pretty much not a single Primarch they couldn't get their hands on and would be unstoppable for it. Yeah, pretty much every Primarch. They just... Which opens up some fun stories for them, because I would love to see more Tyranids trying to get a specific thing to finish out their collection or round themselves out. A fine addition to my collection. I would like that more, because unfortunately, the Tyranids occupy a very unfortunate space in the lore. Hmm. Because they're hellaciously strong, they never win. (laughs) Ever. Every time... A Tyranid is in the same room as a named character. The named character is winning somehow. Which sucks. It sucks. I'd love to see the bugs win more. But the problem is, if they do, they kind of won't stop winning. And also, yeah, they're some... Kind of, they're, they're kind of built to be like a snowball kind oh, of one million percent. Yeah, yeah. And some writers don't know how to deal with them. Because, again, it's a very unending, always adapting, 
the perfect creature, basically. So some writers just make them stupid, <laughs> which they're not. They're not. They're a hive mind. They're very, very smart, actually. But some people opt to nerf them by just making them stupid. Mm-hmm. Which, okay, sure, whatever. Do they at least make them stupid in small groups, or are they stupid? No, no, no like mass collective stupid. Oh, that's unfortunate. Like, like we remove the fun b- budget balancing game here, and they just, they're just, they're dumb zergs, oh. is how some people reduce them. And I'm like, oh. 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 Yeah, because, I mean, that my thought, my thought for a second there would be, what if they're just like the geth from Mass Effect, which... They get smarter. The, they work on the same network. Mm-hmm. And so they get smarter when you have more added because then you have different nodes that can process different things. That would be cool, but that's not a good way to nerf them because they are ultimately the best network all around. Yeah. There's no way you could sever them because once they're connected, they're connected unless you kill them, which good luck. Good luck killing. Good Tyranids. luck. Yeah. So yeah, that's the most unfortunate thing about Tyranids. They're kind of jobbers. <laughs> They're kind of jobbers, they're but... They're so strong, they're jobbers. They're the best jobbers, because... Think about it this way. Yes, every time they're in a room with a named character, the named character will beat the brakes off them. But in that time, ten worlds will have disappeared. <laughs> and they were full of non-named characters. So, it's kind of the best jobber where they could lose, but no, they didn't. Like, <laughs> for example, they lost horrifically a ball, but there's still a problem because they came in from the left now. Yeah. Did d- d- Half a fleet got sucked into the warp, and that is fine, because now they have high fleet Kronos. See what matter. I mean? They'll it's, just go into the warp and chase it. It is the kind of the best jobber. Kind of the best jobber. But still, I want them to be more than that. Yeah. I want them to really fulfill that. Oh, this is the end. Yeah. They're this the, is it. They're the... They're the... They're the, they're the end game thing. And they're the end I, game boss. I would... I know it's never going to happen because Primarchs print so much money. It, I, I get where Games Workshop is coming from. Jesus, it must be nice to have about 20, if we're broke, no, we're not buttons. So nice. So nice. But I would kill to just see what would happen in, in theory if the Tyranids got their hands on something important. I mean, give them... Gaz or Angron or something like that. I would hate to see Gene Steeler Angron. <sighs> You'd just be taking Angron and dialing There's actually him up a chance more. It might be worse because think about it this way: if they take on his traits and become angry, angry people or angry, angry things, the whole bio budget game might get thrown off. Yeah, because they'll be like, eh, "I can do more fight for this." I- exactly. But again, I, I would, I would, I'd kill to see them get their hands on named characters and see what that does or or for example if they got their hands on a custodies oh that'd be bad or oh god i'd kill this is my actual birthday wish i want them to somehow get into trazen's collection because there's so much bad stuff there there's an actual crork if they got a crork oh god yeah they got a crork for those of you that don't know Trazen is a kleptomaniac. He has stolen stuff all throughout time, He's my and he has favorite Necron. A copy of pretty much everything. He he has a copy of Fulgrim, like an actual Primarch. You he has could, a copy of Fulgrim. There's a lot Trazen has. Okay, as a rule, whenever somebody says Trazen has something, you go, "Yes, of course he does." <laughs> Does he have the Liberty Desk? Of course he does. Does he have the Crown Jewels? Of course he does. Does he have Big Ben? One million percent. Why wouldn't he? And does he have an exact clone of a Primarch? Sure. Okay. So, I would love to see them get their hands on that, and that way, Games Workshop can still keep their, you know, their, their, if broke, no, we're not buttons. Just give... They've just got the copy of Fulgrim that Trazen has. Exactly. I just, I want to see how they adapt, because... Right now, we're fairly certain they've eaten... Okay, no, we're, we're 100% certain they've eaten Marines. They've bashed against each other so many times. But in the first few times they encountered each other, I loved that theory feeling of, like, they've gotten tougher. Did they? They've gotten much tougher suddenly. Did they? Did they? Did they? Did, did we lose did, any Marines? Did they? Has anybody, has anybody not called back? Yeah. Uh, do we need to look at the spreadsheets? Do we need to call Gelliman? 
I, I would love that. They are also, they do, other than their horrifically slow travel and their sometimes inconsistent writing, another weakness of theirs is they can't use, well, they don't use technology. Mm. In theory, they could adapt, true, but... Why would they? Why would they? Why would I make a gun when I can fire a tiny guy at you that's just going to run rampant in your body? <laughs> Why would I learn to make a sword and I can just suck every mineral out of the ground and use it to create hardened bone blades? Hardened bone blades. The, uh, w- one of their one of their main guys. Oh dear, hold on. I need to know his name. I c- that's inexcusable if I don't know his name. It's just late. Give me a second. Narval, Gene Steeler. Oh, for God's sake. You know what? Never mind. So, how how do you... Why, why would I ever innovate? You don't need to. I can evolve to this situation. They're playing the they're playing the energy predator budget game. Why would I... Why would I invest time and brain power and uh, resources into crafting a sword when I have this thing that already works? I can just make one in a vat. Call it good. Yeah. And I've seen your swords. Yeah, sure. They have chainsaws attached to them, but mine work twice as well. Mm-hmm. So I grew it. Yeah, I grew mine. Yeah, exactly. All natural. <laughs> they are the... If there ever was anything that could unite the entire universe, it's the Tyranids. That's how powerful they are right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, every faction looks at them and goes, Ew. Yuck. 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 Across the board. Eldar hate them. Hate them because they're the most psychic. The shadow of the warp must be agony for them yeah i would imagine every single person of your race just suddenly just like hearing the demons clawing into their brains mm-hmm. oh it's terrible that'd the, be awful the the necrons hate them because hey those are our meat bags we wanted to use those yeah. we were gonna it's, not eat those it, but y- you know it's less of a personal thing and more of like a hey what the f- what 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 exactly the hell? chaos doesn't like them because they're incorruptible and they just kind of keep killing the things that are supposed to be worshiping them orcs love them oh that's a great fight that's a fight oh it's a wonderful fight it's a fight spectacular fight orcs do not care they will just fight you and i want to see more about the fleet that was locked in a war with with the orcs for so long and one barely but one i want to see how they adapted I would love to see how they've adapted. Yeah, that, that in scary ways, I would assume. Oh, one million percent. One million percent. Could fighting orcs for such a long time? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, specifically, I like the new high fleet where they're coming from the left and they just have elites being force-fed into them. So, God, I can't wait to see how they turn out. That's going to be great. I Listen, I just want more stories about the Tyranids that focuses on their weird espionage and less on like their unrelenting force. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. An RKO is always nice. I, I will never complain about seeing somebody get tombstoned. That's always that's always that's always great. That's always great. But the Tyranids are reduced to doing that a lot of the time. I'd love to see more. And we're getting new forms. Yeah. So, yeah. They 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 seem to do again, this is my uh the Mass Effect nerd in me. Mm-hmm. They seem to be doing the same things the Reapers do, where they just like before they even arrive, they're just subtly influencing people's minds to like, hey, you're on our side now. Yeah, you're on our side now. You're come on, on our... Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, you're going to help us out. It's, it's going to be fun. And so, like, that was one of my favorite parts about the re- the Reapers and Mass Effect is mm-hmm. the, the espionage games. The yeah. the the um the secret brainwashing. Mm-hmm. And the Tyranids do the same thing. And I think that's the same level of cool. I actually think only Korn of would like him. Or really? the Chaos Gods. I think so. Because Slanesh can't corrupt them. Zinch can't. Well, Zinch could plan around them, but could not influence them. Yeah. Nurgle hates them because they're basically, oh, I got them sick, yay, for five minutes, now they're immune. Grand. Great. But I think Korn loves them because they're like, it's, it's a, a fight. fight. It's a fight. It's a brawl. It's a brawl. And anyone who brings a good 1v1, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, bring it. That has been the Tyranids today. And while the credits roll with our wonderful patrons' names, we are going to do the Foreign Fracas for Fort today. International Incident. It's a working title. That's the full title. Yeah, that is the full title. It's been missed, but it's back. Moral of the story is, way, 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 way back, a long time ago, in a land far, far away, I passively mentioned that the Australians were running the game, and it's been a trend for all of you to let me know where you're from. And a fun fact about there. And today's winner goes back where it all started or at least close to where it all started 
New Zealand. New Zealand. Yes. Oh, very close to where it all started. Yeah, very close. New Zealand wins. And their fun fact for the day is, I thought it was a Welsh town. I really did, because I remember seeing a while ago that this reporter who pronounced it perfectly, but apparently the longest town name in the world is there. Oh, really? I will not pronounce it, because I have limits. <laughs> they're, they're, they're big, but I can't pronounce that. So instead... Here's an audio clip. Tau mata faka tangi hanga ko au au o tamate atu ripu kaka piki maunga horo nuku pokai fenu akita nata. And what it translates to is the summit where Tamatea, the man with big knees, the slider, climber of mountains, the land swallower who traveled about, played his nose flute to his loved ones. It's it's a whole sentence to honor a Maori explorer who traversed a lot of New Zealand. I believe most of it, don't quote me on that, but a lot of it. I think that's... So the Maori people named it after him. That is a very cool. I right. like that. I love that for them. Mm-hmm. That's, that's like, that's like, that's, uh, that's like Edia Mean level. Like, oh, God, yeah. <laughs> long title. Oh, God, yeah. I'm just Well, I, this one I like more because it's a sentence in specific. Mm-hmm. Royal titles are just ongoing just, for ongoing they're just, words. Sometimes. they're just words. But congrats to New Zealand. We see you guys. Um, and if you would like to win for your country, make sure you leave it in the comments. If you want to join the wonderful names all over the screen right now, head on over to patreon.com slash Sander and Coda. And for all of you amazing Americans out there who are wondering, hey, hold on a minute. You're right. You would have won. However... I have had to nerf the U.S. There's too much of it. There's too much U.S. There's too much U.S. There's too much U.S. There's a lot of U.S. And if I did not change the scoreboard a bit, they would sweep every time. Yeah. And so it, then it would just be U.S. fun facts. It is now. It's like there's only so many times I can talk about the big frying pan in Kentucky. No, no, there's there's a ton of fun facts about the U.S. Oh, I love it. No, 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 no. That's not the problem. The problem is it would just it would just it, 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 it'd be a sweep. It'd, It'd be a be sweep, sweep every, every time. time. And I like I like competition. So I'm splitting it into regions. Regions? So it's going to be... I was thinking about doing states, but then I figured that would be a bit unfair, even though most states are the size of countries. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do that. Yeah. I, I, I love I love our American audience. It's great. So I'm, I'm going to... I think I'm going to do regions. Regions. We're going to do the West Coast, mm-hmm. East Coast, South... And Midwest. And Midwest. There yeah. you go. So it's going to be the East Coast, the West Coast, the South, and the Midwest. And then from there, we'll pick a different state to highlight every time. We still see you, Alaskans. I believe you'll count as West Coast. The math is the, still mathing. It's technically. Same thing te- with Hawaiians. Technically. The, we're we're going we're gonna to iron that out. We'll find out in post. But, yes. So that's the way it's going to be going. Uh, just, just for fairness' sake. Because, again, the U.S. would sweep. It would just be a sweep nerf. every time. However, if it feels too brutal, we will change it again. We're not opposed to being wrong. So we'll see how that works. We'll adjust the meta as things go. (laughs) We'll adjust the meta as things go, yes. And for those of you curious about the patches, I know a bunch of you have been asking. Um, They're currently in (laughs) pre-production is the main thing. We're trying to find somebody who can do them well because I don't want to. Because, listen, it'd be easy for me to find somebody who could do it with dubious labor practices and make something that would last all of five minutes. But that's not the point. We, we don't want that. I want to thank the people who supported us from day one, the people who continue to support us, and those who will support us in the future. So I want to make sure it's good, the designs turn out good, the color turns out good, and I'm only shipping them out once I have samples in my hand that are quality. Yeah. Because I'd rather do something good. So And I'm, are, I'm also going to be like wearing these patches oh, out. Percent. I don't want to be wearing something that looks like cheap and like awful. So like... We want it to look good for you guys, One too. Million percent. And because I'm a vain, vain, vain person, mm-hmm. I want it to look good for me. <laughs> Whatever. But yes, we they are still being developed. Um, we are currently actually developing the two that we've already shattered and then the additional 500 one in the- advance because... We shatter goals in this household really fast. So we're just preparing in advance. The, f- the first two actually kind of surprised us. So we're oh, like, one million percent. We've oh, said oh. this 101 times. <laughs> yeah. That fast? <laughs> so thank you, guys. There no, truly, thank you, guys. are also a couple people who have deemed us asking, wait, am I actually in the top 100 or the top 250? Check your Patreon DMs. By the time this episode is live, you will know. Yeah. 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 So I will let you know. 
For those of you already there, thank you so much. Again, none of this is possible without you, and I can't put into words how much I appreciate that. And we will see you guys on Wednesday for the special episode, and Saturday for the regular episode.